Alrighty, YouTube, and welcome back to Fern Valley Farms YouTube channel, where on this channel we are pure country. Okay, it's another cold, lousy day. It's like March 6th, I think, when I'm doing this video right now. It's supposed to be 40. It's like 10. Thank God it's supposed to warm up. So, I'm back down to bee shop here, getting stuff ready for, uh, hopefully, spring will get here at some point. I got three new packages coming next month in April. My other hives, uh, a couple of them I didn't make it through the winter. They were doing really good until like a month ago. The other one, knock on wood, is like my meanest hive actually is very strong. And the other sh one I'm not sure of, um, I don't want to obviously open it. Never open your hives unless it's a nice, sunny, warm day. Don't get excited and think I'm just going to peek on them. You let all that heat out. So just kind of control yourself. I know it's really tempting when it's a nice day out, but if the sun's beating on them and it's warm, it's 50, go ahead and peek at them. But if not, just leave them closed. You're better off. Because if they aren't, if they didn't make it, what are you going to do? So anyways, uh, what I'm doing right now is I built some nuke boxes. I built two nuke boxes. I'm going to actually try and winter a nuke next, this well, next winter. Um, so I built two of these. This is going to be kind of like how what I did. I'm not going to go step by step because it takes a while. Uh, for my regular size hive, I built my screen bottom board. But I did do a video on that last year. Let me get up a little closer here to this camera. And I forgot to turn my light on again, like I always do. Hold on, everybody. I always forget to turn this light on. So I wash out my hand here. Okay. Hang on. You know, you think after how many videos I made, you think I have to figure out to turn the light on? Okay, so, screen bottom board. I did a video on these last year. Uh, I'm going to show you how I put the nuke one together. And it's basically the same thing except it's for uh, the regular size hive. I like these screen bottom boards because you get all this ventilation from the back. Let's all that air come through. Uh, nothing, mice, if they get in there, they can't get up into your hive because that's number eight hardware cloth on there. Uh, what I did with these, I got all the pieces cut here. And this one here, actually, these are the exact, these are the proper lengths. These are one by fours. Uh, these are very, fairly inexpensive. It's a lot cheaper to build this thing yourself. But they're one by fours. Obviously, two for the bottom. One on this side, one on that side. Half inch plywood on the bottom. You can use three eighths. I, this actually, this one's actually three eighths. The other plywood I got for the other ones I made was actually half inch. Um, depends how much money you want to spend. But, depending on how, if it's half inch or three eighths, you've got to cut your groove to be the same to make it fit. So this one here, I believe is, this is half inch. This is a half inch cut. I put it on my router table over there. If you're using a router, be really careful. It will eat your fingers. Just pay attention. Turn your router, turn your router on and pay close attention. And you can see how I cut these grooves. Like I said, I'm not going to sit here and do this video on, and show you step by step, but you can see the groove here. I put the groove in. You want to leave yourself, I left myself about a half inch, and I'll show you why in a second here for, for underneath. You don't want it sitting right on the ground. My hives are sitting on 4 by 4s uh, on blocks, so they are up off the ground, but you don't want, you don't want your, <coughs> the bottom of your, of your screen bottom board sitting right on the ground or right where a lot of moisture can get. At least if you've got a good half inch gap right here between here and the board, um, there's a little bit of air underneath it. And like I said, mine are on four by fours, which you've seen in the videos. So they are up off the ground. They're a good uh, foot and a half up off the ground. So you want to cut your notch to length. And here again, some of this stuff you got to experiment with. I can't, it would take forever to show you exactly step by step, but I got the pieces cut here. Um, so I'm going to show you how I put this together in a smaller version. Let's get this out of the way. And you can see I've got one here that i got to finish putting the side pieces on. See the, see the, uh, the landing board is on, but the, the entrance isn't there. Um, the screen is on. And I will show you that we'll go underneath it. So let me get this out of the way. i got so much stuff on my table here. Okay, so my pieces are cut. Like I said, a smaller version. All the landing board is is a piece of 1x6. The, the entrance 
It's just a piece. So this is actually a piece of one by four cut right in half. You can get two pieces out of it. One by four works out really nice because even these strips here, you can cut. You can get four of these pieces out of a one by four if you use your table saw. And here again, be careful on the table saw. That'll eat your fingers too. I've got proof right here. Actually, <laughs> I had an accident last week. Um, my entrance, I just keep it. A, I just make my entrances all about the same size. Even for my for my big for my regular size screen bottom boards, they're about three inches long by about three eighths. I just leave it that size. I don't reduce it. I haven't had any problems with that yet. Knock on wood. So building. So for my nukes, I still want to have a screen bottom board too. I want to have. I want to have that ventilation in the back. I want to be able to slide the sticky board inside there. I got beetle traps. I got some new ones I'm going to show you here coming up probably another month or so when I get ready to put those in. They're really, really nice. Um, you can put that on your board. You can slide that in. That's a different video. So what I'm going to do, put that right there. And what I did for my... What I did for the bottom is I use half inch plywood. Now normally I would cut one piece full length, but I have scrap. Don't ever throw any of your scrap away. You'd be surprised how handy your scrap comes in. All these pieces of one by four that I ripped out, that I've ripped into four pieces. See, because here's four of them. Just rip it right in four. You got four pieces. Even extra smaller pieces, which you'll see in a minute how handy they come in. I've got a whole table full of scrap here. Even the plywood. Uh, if you put it on your if you put it on your miter box, you'll get yourself a nice straight cut. But once it's in the hive and it's glued, yeah, it should be one piece. But why waste the scrap, right? The plywood's not cheap. So and this is you don't want to use OSB either. Let me stress that OSB. Uh, I don't have a piece close by. You'll know what I'm talking about. It's put together with like pieces of wood. I don't have a piece close by here, do I? No. You'll know, you know what OSB is. It's, it's the stuff that's got a, here, a piece right here. I'll show you. Sorry to keep stepping in front of the camera. This is OSB. You see the difference? And you've seen this. This is everywhere. They build houses with it. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with this at all. The only problem is moisture will get into that. This will suck up moisture. Because I'm both, all this is is compressed. It's, I don't know how they do it, but it's all glued. It's glued, uh, Pieces of sawdust, pieces of wood chips, obviously, they make it different thicknesses. Uh, this stuff works great for a lot of stuff, but you don't want to put it on the bottom. You don't want to put it on the bottom of your hive where moisture, there's a lot of moisture, obviously, underneath. That's going to grab, that's going to suck up moisture, and what happens is that stuff will kind of flake off and peel off. The plywood won't, and not that plywood can't rot with moisture, but it won't, it won't come apart like the OSB will. And of course you want to paint this too. And I use a good, and I'll do a video on that. I use a good outdoor, a good outdoor paint, weatherproof. Don't buy the cheap stuff because it's gonna, it's, it, it won't last as long. Spend a couple extra bucks and it's not really that much money. Buy yourself a good, a good can of paint. Uh, uh, you know, exterior, I use white. You can do different colors. So anyways, I'm gonna show you really quick how I do this. So what I'm gonna do, I always glue everything. Like I said before, this Title Bond Premium Wood Glue is really nice. It's supposed to be weatherproof. It, it's everything's held up so far. Uh, make sure there's no glue stuck in the end here. So this stuff works out really well. When you buy this stuff in the store, you know, like when you buy these stuff manufactured, there's nothing wrong with it. But they staple it. It's like I did a video on uh, making inner covers. I built mine heavy duty, and I, there's a video on that. You can go check that out. They're not coming apart. When you buy this stuff, they staple it. They put two or three staples in the hole together. And you know what it's like when you're taking your hives apart, and you're putting your hive tool and popping boxes loose, and when the bees propolize stuff and you're trying to pull it apart, it's going to come apart. That's why I like to glue everything. So what I'm going to do is I've got my half inch, I've got my half inch groove cut. Now this is going to be a little bit different because I've got two pieces here. And I just run a bead of glue down the middle of it. I will put my first piece in. And that grooves out nice and fits in there. Let me put, put the other piece in too. 
you got yourself a few, but when you put your glue in, you've got time. You don't got to put the glue in and be like, OMG, quick, get the stuff. It ain't going to dry that fast. But when this stuff does dry and set, it's a beautiful thing. It is tough. And they'll, I cut both of these sides on my miter box, so they're perfectly, well, they're pretty close to perfectly straight. There, see? Now, I'm going to turn this over, tap this in. How nice that fits in there. You cut that half inch groove with your router. If you're gonna make yourself, if you, if you like work, you know, do a lot of woodwork and you've got the room for it, get yourself a router table. They are really nice, but like I said, be very careful. A router will eat your fingers quick. Um, so that fits in there really nice. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna tap this in and close that gap up just a little bit. But uh, like I said, why waste the scrap, right? See? Perfect. Now we will take the other one. Make sure you put the right sides in first. Don't do it backwards. Because obviously, I'm telling you this for a reason, because I've done it. <laughs> so we are going to do it this way. Now to this end, I'm going to put the glue this way. When you put the glue down and you try and turn it over, it might run out. So I just do it like this. I just run a little bead. And you really don't need a whole lot. Especially if you've got a nice tight groove, you don't need a whole lot. This stuff will grab. You can see this on camera good enough. Put it right in there. Perfect. Look at that. I love it. Put that in there. Just give it a little tap. Make sure you're in. There. See? That's kind of why I had all this stuff set up. Um, some guys will do videos and they'll they'll cut all the pieces and get everything cut and spend an hour <coughs> cutting wood. It just it's just easier to have. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just easier to have it all kind of cut. And you can experiment yourself. Take your measurements off your box and do it that way. So now I got to put the center piece here. You got this here. Now I got to put I got to put this in here because obviously this is the front of the this is the front of the hive. So this will go in. Like that. Here again, I'm gonna put a bead of glue. I've actually had this sitting on this table ready to make this video for like a month. I've had other stuff I'm trying to get finished. I'm finally getting this done because I need to get close here. I gotta get my I got roofs I gotta get finished built. Okay, this one's gonna fight me here. Come on, get in there. What's going on here? It's not tapping it like it's supposed to. There it goes. See, beautiful. Tap it together. Look at it. Huh? See that? And I'm going to nail this. So there. I'm going to beat a glue here. Beat a glue here. Get your plywood in. And you see that gap is not that big of a deal. And then once you put your sticky board over that anyways, nothing's going to come through that. Get that in there. And I am going to nail it. I use two different size nails. I got sawdust in my eye. I use two different size nails. And what I should have done, that'll be all right. I should have put a bead of glue on the inside here and here. I didn't. But that's okay. It'll be fine. Because um, it's glued. This is all glued, so it's not going nowhere once it all sets up. You got 4D and 6D nails. If you're going straight through a piece of wood like this, these 6Ds are really nice. And they go into pine. Go into pine really nice. So even though you're gluing it, I would still nail it because it still could come apart. And like I said, I should have put a bead of glue here and here. I just forgot about it, but it'll be okay because, like I said, this is glued all the way around. It ain't going nowhere. And it's funny you can pick this up now. You can kind of feel how it moves. So again, all right, I got it fixed. The piece shifted on me. I had to take it off, so now I'm going to run a bead, another bead of glue down. You want to make sure your ends don't get uneven. That's what just happened there. You want to make sure that doesn't get uneven. When I tap the centerpiece in, when I tap that in, it shifted it over. I didn't catch it. So now let's go back to this.
Okay, now we're straight. Now I've got it straight here. I've got it straight there. Like I said, it's shifted on me. Now, that's why you never want to take your nails and drive your nails all the way in either. Get your nails started. Don't drive them all the way in. It never fails. You can take a nail and start it and drive it all the way in. Something's off and you got to pull it out. Then you wind up tearing your wood apart. So let's get this started again. We'll put that in there. Get another one here. Another one there. There. That's straight. I'm actually going to readjust this nail here. Oh, that's all right. Now, flip it over, same thing. Get your nail started. Don't go all the way in. Get it started. It's hitting that groove. There. Now it's all nice and straight. Well, of course, it's going to fight me a little bit here, isn't it? I'm going to put one more nail right here. And once you glue your top pieces on, too, that's going to lock all this in place. I'm going to show you that in a minute here. Okay, there. Now, it's all good and straight. And it's funny, when you feel this right now, you can feel, I mean, it doesn't feel loose. But when it dries, you can just you can feel a difference how solid and tight this stuff is. All right, now the next step in the process, you're gonna put your back piece. I've got all these pieces of scrap that I've cut. Some pieces are extra, you know, if they if they didn't fit right, save your scrap. And here's why. Because what you're gonna do is you're gonna put two. What I do is how I do it. I run two boards. I run a piece here, a piece here, and I put my landing board right here. I put my screen on, which I'll show you here in a minute. Now for these, I'm going to use a smaller, well, no, I'm not going to. I'm still going to use the longer nail. If you want to prevent splitting, pre-drill this. But if you nail this with the, with, the, with, the, with the wood grain, it won't split. If you go against it, sometimes it will. Um, so if you want, you can pre-drill it, and then it will guarantee it won't split. So what I'm going to do, and I'm going to put this here. And I could be wrong, too, on that wood grain thing. I've, I've tried it both ways. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. So kind of scratch what I just said. But if you want to be sure nothing's going to split, just pre-drill it. The only problem with pre-drilling, sometimes you don't get a good of a bite. Unless you use a really, really small drill bit. I'm going to make sure these are... I'm going to put this piece here and there. So what I'll do sometimes when I go to pre-drill... I'll just go part way into the wood. I won't go all the way through. So this way, when the nail finish is going through, it, it's got a better grab to it. These take a little bit more time to put together. And you might have to tweak how you're doing it. This is the general concept of how I do it. And like I said, it's nice in the summertime. You can leave that open. And I'm going to show you. I have an opening a piece that goes to the back, no vent, so air can get through it. In the wintertime, I block it all the way off so no air can go through, obviously. So we're going to put this here. Wipe the excess glue off. Now, I've got my other pieces cut. These are going to go... These go here. Now the reason this one is a little bit shorter, which I'm going to show you. So well, that one's going to go here. This one's going to go here. And I didn't grab, hopefully I've got it cut. All right, I'm going to take this. I, I, I thought I had it cut and I didn't. I'm going to measure this really quick. Get this measured. Throw it out. Give me two seconds here. I don't know if on this camera you can see, you can kind of see the corner here. Alright, sorry about that. I thought I had a cut. This, the landing board, is going to go right there. These pieces are going to go in between. Flip it over 
over here. Here again. I glue it. I glue everything. Right there. I'll put this on first. And I got a busted piece of wood here I didn't notice. I should have had this flipped over, but that's fine. I'm just going to glue it. There's a, there's a knot there. I'll just make sure my nail doesn't go in where that knot is. Never drive your nail into a knot because you could split your wood or you could split it and it could bust off. Or it won't go in, period, because the knots are so hard. So this is going to sit right like that. Again, start here. I'm going to start this one on this side here. I'm going to avoid. I'm going to avoid where that knot is. Start that there. Some guys use an air gun, and you can use an air nail. I just don't like the air nailer. Not that there's anything wrong with it, but once you pop it, you're in. It's in. I like hand nailing better. This way, I know I'm straight. I'm square. So if it moves just like that, see then I, I can come around, make sure I'm square here, here, and back here. And on this one, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna put one here. Normally I can put the nail right here, but that knot is right there, and all that's gonna do is split it. So I'm gonna just put it back here. This one can go up front. Now once you know you're all straight, square, square here. There. There's your landing board. Now your next pieces are going to go right here. You put one here, one here. And look at that, it fits perfect. You're better off having the pieces cut just a hair longer. If you got to trim it, then you could. It's better off to have it too long than too short. If it's too short, obviously you can't add nothing to it. But if it's too long, you could trim it. So I'm going to put these here. I'm going to run a bead of glue like that. Yeah, I love this. This stuff is when this stuff dries. This stuff is solid. Okay, I'm going to put that there. Sometimes I'll put this stuff on. I'll let it sit in the wood, I'll let it just set for a minute. It's kind of funny how this glue works. When you put the wood on it, if you try and move it right away, it's going gonna, it's gonna to shift really fast because it's obviously it's wet. Um, but if you let it sit there for a minute, it almost like grabs it. See, then it doesn't, sh it doesn't slide as much. Let me grab this towel here. Hold on. There's a, there's a lot to putting these boards together, but they are really nice. And if you like building stuff, you get the satisfaction to do it yourself. Okay, here again. See how it moved. But, we start it. Straight. You could buy a 1x4. You could buy these 1x4s and 8 foot lengths. And I've got a piece, uh, I have a piece right here. You could buy these 1x4s at 8 foot lengths, depending on where you buy them, anywhere from uh, 2 and a quarter to 250 a piece. And they're 8 feet, and you get a lot of pieces of wood out of that. And you can see all the extra scrap I got here when I cut. You can rip that thing right down the middle, and you can cut all these to length. You've got plenty of wood. So building these isn't that expensive, it's a little time consuming. Nail it. it's straight, make sure it's straight, and you can even adjust it a little bit. I'll put three nails in it. And I know it's already straight. Where? Good. One more in the middle.
Now, the next step in this process is your screen. Here again, save your scrap. Don't even throw this stuff away. You can go on eBay and buy this number eight hardware cloth for, I forget what the roll is, but it comes in a pretty good size roll. And this stuff cuts really easy. You take a pair of scissors, you can cut this stuff no problem. But let me grab my staple gun. Don't mean to front, walk in front of the camera here. When I cut, when I cut my screen, where's that roll at? It was right, where's it at? It's right here, actually. Hold on. When I cut my screen for my, my uh, normal, size, normal size hive box uh, bottom boards, you have extra because so, it only comes two feet wide. I think this was like a 25 foot roll. It's really not that much money. It's like, I, I could be anywhere from between 10 and 15 dollars, something like that. But when you cut, when you cut for your regular size bottom board, you have this left over. So look where this fits. Perfect, right there. See? I got lucky. Don't throw anything away. I always say that. Never throw nothing away. So what I do is I take my staple gun and I get it started. I'll get it started on either end. Try and pull it kind of tight. Kind of careful with this stuff. If you pull it too much, it could come out of the staples. Sometimes you get excess pieces of this stuff peeling off, and when you cut it, let me grab. Let me grab the scissors. Like I said, don't throw your scrap away. All you, you can see, if you look behind me, see all that? That's all scrap. And I've used about half of that stuff already. I'm, I'm building more of this stuff. When you need a small piece for something, there it is. Now this one's just a hair short. But what I'm going to do, cut this off. As long as I get it on here. These small staple guns work really handy for this thing, for, for doing this too. And even if it's just a hair short and you staple it down, we're going to glue the next piece right on top of that to hold it down. So, right there. And I will go around. Even though you staple it, I'll take my hammer. This one came out just a little narrower, but it'll still work. Like I said, we're going to glue it down anyway. So, get the back down. Any of these small pieces. This stuff is so thin, you can take a, a good pair of scissors, and you could, you could cut it with that. You'll see, what, you'll see what I mean when you start working with this stuff. It works really nice, but it is thin, and when you cut it, it'll fray on the ends a little bit. Like I said, since I'm a little narrow here, I'm going to just put a couple extra staples in. There. There. See, it's all on there really nice. Look down underneath it. Nothing, you know, mice can get through there. The hive beetles can't come up through it because the holes are too small, which is kind of nice. Now, the next step, wipe off some of this excess glue. Now we are going to take our longer piece, which goes right here. 
So if you were just a hair short, you're gonna glue, you're gonna glue and nail that right on. That's gonna hold that thing right there. It's not going nowhere. It ain't going anywhere. So here again, take the glue, find yourself a bead. I'm gonna go a little bit more generous on this part here, just because this this piece is just a hair short. I'm gonna run a bead here. that there and be careful where your nails are over here where your first nails are you're gonna have to you're gonna have to move these nails in just a little bit so these nails here are on the outside obviously when you're gonna nail this you can't go in the same spot so just check where your nails are put this right on and get your nails started If you do hit a nail, you'll know right away if you hit a nail. It'll feel solid. You'll be like, whoops, I hit a nail, and I can't remember where that one was, so I'm going to put this one. Yep, I see it right there. I'm going to move this one in just a little bit. If you start driving it in, you hit yourself a nail and just pull it back out. Not a big deal. Make sure that's straight. That's good. You can see how this is locking this whole thing together. Now, this piece is going to go right there. Right on, just like that. Why is that sitting crooked? I got a nail. And you want to make sure, oh, this is straight. Oh, that's why. That one staple was sitting up a little bit. I'm going to put a little more glue on here. Like I said, just because this one was a little short. But being a little bit short like that is not a big deal. Because like I said, you're gluing it and why waste it? Like I said, not that it's really expensive, but hey, why waste it? Just one less thing to have to buy. Let's put that on like that. And where are my nails? Of course, I, I always do that. I always forget to check to see where my nails are. Okay. Right here. I'm going to bring this one in just a little bit. Make sure it's square. And that one, did it shift on me? That one shifted. I'm going to pull that one out. I'm going to put this one right here. We're gonna move. We're gonna move that nail over. Okay, I'm gonna pull. I usually have a pair of pullers. Where are my pullers at? They're not here. I'm gonna take this and go straight in here. Okay, I got a pair of pullers here. I'm just, I'm just gonna pull it out this way. If you try and take your hammer, if you try and take your hammer on your hand and pull it this way, you might pop this whole thing up. These, these are, these are actually a pair of nail nippers. I'm, I'm a horseshoer too. I don't know if anybody knew that or not. I shoe horses. That's my main thing here. This B thing is just a sideline I got going. These are actually used for cutting nails when you put a horseshoe on. So when they wear out, they come in, they work, they're great for carpenter tools when they wear out. Yeah, but these are, when you, when you put a horseshoe on, these are used for cutting the extra nail off. So when they're wore out, they work, they're an, ex, they're an excellent carpenter's tool. So anyways, that's a different video. So that's there. One more piece on the back, which is going to go right there. I've already had it pre-cut. That's going to sit there. Here again, get the glue out. Now on this piece, I am going to use the smaller nail. Can you figure out why? And you know how I've learned the hard way? 
this longer nail, when you go to put this on, here, let me set this on here. When you go to, when you go to hammer this through, that nail's going to pop out in here. So here, I'll use the number fours. The four, um, uh, it's like a four, what do they call it, a four sinker. It's got a little head on it. So I'm going to put that right there. This will not come through. Line that up square. Here again, this is why I like hand nailing. There's your prime example right there. You had a, if you had an air nailer and if you were off a little bit, and bam, you pop that in, the nail's going to shoot out the side. This way you start it, you can see it was going crooked. You take your, you can take any kind of, any pliers or any kind of wire cutters, you can pull your nail out and readjust it. If you would use the air gun, it's already in. Then you got to pull that out. You might wind up busting the piece. You're going to get glue all over the place. You might rip the screen. That's why I like hand nailing so much better. I can start it. I can line my piece up here. See? I'm good. And I'm going to put one more in the middle. There you go. Bring this up closer so you can see it. There it is, see? Now, your box is going to sit right on here. Your screen's right underneath it. Now, we got one more thing to add to this. got to put the entrance on. And all the entrance is is a piece of 1x4 cut in half. Here's the, here's the entrance for the bigger hives, for the, big, for the bigger screen bottom boards. See, I just use one size entrance. Um, and it works out really good. I don't reduce it or anything. Mice can't get in there. Well, they probably could, but it'd really be hard for them. It's only, it's only like 3 eighths. I haven't had knock on wood any issues yet. Um, but for the for the nuke, I'm gonna make uh, I made a smaller entrance, obviously, but I can make them about three inches long, three eighths, and it works out really well. And having the bigger entrance like that, a lot of your bees can come in and out no problem instead of having a small entrance. That's just how I like to do it. There's, everybody's got their own way of doing things. Now, this is gonna go right. There, you see that? Just like that. And what I like to do, I don't know if the bees care or not, but I like, because obviously right here is a little piece of screen, and a little piece of wire sticking up right here. Because obviously this isn't going to cover the whole thing. When you put this on, you put that on, it's going to cover up the end of the screen. Well, you got the, you got the entrance where there's a little piece of screen open. I put some glue on there, and I kind of smooth it out. And when that dries, it's got a nice smooth entrance. I really don't think the bees care, but they might. So what, I, but what I'm going to do on this one now is I'm going to start the nail. And I'll show you why in a minute. I'm going to start this nail just like this. Because when you go to put this on, just get it to come in. This way, when you got this thing standing up like this, your nails are already started. When you're trying to hold this and hold a nail, it gets a little awkward. So I'm going to take, again, a little bit of glue. On the end of this, a little bit of glue on the end of that. I'm going to put that right there. I can hold it with my thumb now. And my nail, which of course is crooked. <laughs> I'm going to hold it right there. Make sure it's straight. Okay, here we go. Let's start this over again.
There you go. A little bit of a blooper right there for the next blooper reel. I need to pull this out. That can't be pulled out. I had, I had it too close. I had it too close. Here I couldn't get my hammer behind it. So Okay, this one's gonna argue this one's gonna argue with me, isn't it? it? Should be okay. Let's put some more glue on here. Another drop of glue. If I wiped it off by accident, I put the piece in the wrong spot. Get it started. There you go. Make sure it's straight. nailing into this thin wood that it doesn't pop out. Even though you've got your nail straight, there you go. Wipe the excess glue out of the corners. I just keep an old rag sitting here just to wipe this. And what I'm going to do, like I said, I don't know if the bees care or not, if it bothers them or not, but you got a, you got a couple little pieces of Something, you know, little pieces of wire sticking up. I am just going to take and I am going to just glue that down. If I can get that piece out of there. I'm going to take and I just take a little bit of glue and just put it. You probably can't see, but I'm going to put it right here, right just over the end of the wire. Let it kind of settle itself. Take an old nail or something, just kind of, just kind of smooth it out. The glue will work itself down into the holes, and when it dries, it's got a nice smooth surface. You don't want to hurt, you don't want them hurting the little feet, right? Well, like I said, I don't know if they care or not. They might not. I'm just doing it. <laughs> so there you have it. That is our screen bottom board for a nuke. Once this thing dries, this thing is going to be solid as could be. This thing is really going to be solid. I love it. So. Anyway, hopefully you like my idea. Hopefully you try it. Let's put the box on. We'll see how it works. Put your box on. Look at that, huh? Beautiful. Perfect. There's your nuke screen bottom board. You got your entrance. Your bees can get in. You're all set to go. So, hopefully you like my video. Hopefully you learned something from it. Give it a try. See if you like it. Kind of take your own measurements. Uh, I didn't put. I, I'm not going to give measurements and all that stuff because it, it's going to vary. It could vary by a sixteenth. It could vary by an eighth. Take your boxes. Make your own measurements. But if you do it the way I just did it, which I think is a pretty good way, and actually I forgot to show you one more thing here. The sticky boards I made. I forgot about this. Now obviously this one is made for a full size hot. What I did, you can go out and buy yourself. Uh, you know, like when you see out like pol political signs, for sale signs, the, 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 the corrugated plastic, and that's pretty much all they are. You can go buy yourself a sheet of that, um, or you can buy smaller pieces at the store, or you can find them online, and you, got, you can get them blank, and it works just fine. This actually, and I did do that last year on my house. I bought some online, and they're really nice thick plastic, but after a while, moisture get, when the moisture from the bees and from the, from the rain and the ground, it kind of warps it just a little bit. I went and bought, it's back there on the shelf. <laughs> I bought quarter inch, it's almost like a paneling. I forget what it's called, but it's like an underlayment. But all it is is really thin quarter inch. It's almost like a paneling. You can see it here. It's just like a paneling. And I took this, the whiteboard, and this piece actually came from the dollar store. This actually isn't, this isn't the, uh, the political science stuff or the first sale science stuff, this is more of a foam, a solid foam. And I just took my glue, I took my Title Bond wood glue, and I just smeared the glue all over this. I stuck this on there, I just kind of took the piece and I pushed it around, I moved it around to smear the glue underneath it, and I let it sit overnight. This ain't going nowhere. I'm sure if you worked hard enough that would come off. But my whole thought to this is now over the summer, it's not going to warp. And what this will do, this just slides right in. See? 
There you go. And what I have for the back, it's not finished yet. But see this? Here again, a piece of one by four cut down the middle. You can go a long way with some of this wood and save yourself a bunch of money. Cut right down the middle. I got two holes drilled in it. I'm going to take some of my scrap that I did not throw away, hardware cloth, put it over that so nothing can get in. Mice, uh, yellow jackets, which last year were horrible. Yellow jackets, mice, nothing can get in. That will go right on there. And there you go. I got This one's got to be trimmed just a little bit because the thick, this one was made for just the board only, not the plywood or the, the other stuff glued to it. And all I'm going to do is from the bottom, I'm going to nail it on just like that. There you go. And if you want to pull it out, pull it out. See? There you go. It's a lot cheaper. These were a dollar a piece. I need to get more, actually. Put that on there. Put your screen on. Then if you want to put your hide beetle traps, which I'm going to do another video on that. They're in the box up there. You put your hide beetle trap on, slide it in. There you go. You're done. That's all there is to it. And in the winter time, you can pull that out. I've got insulation on my hives. Or you can even just leave it in. It's will slide all the way flush. Or when, I, but when, I, when you do your, like with me, I do my, uh, my acylic, my acylic uh, acid for uh, Varroa. I use the fogger. What, I'm, what I do is I take white tape and I tape the back of it. Here again, that's a whole other video. But this way, when you're fogging your hives, it doesn't come out the holes. But that's another story. So anyway, that's how you make your sticky boards. A lot cheaper, too. Real easy to make. Gluing the plywood to the bottom of it just gives it a little bit more strength. It just makes it a lot, of less, a lot less wobbly. I actually pulled my other ones out of my hives. They're kind of warm. I've got them sitting in water to wash them all off, clean them. And I'm going to glue them right to one of those pieces right there. Let me show you here. I just bought a 4x8 sheet of this stuff. I forget exactly what it's called, but just a 4x8 sheet. I cut it in pieces. I got, I think, a dozen pieces out of a 4x8. So this stuff ain't moving. This ain't going nowhere. And glue that stuff right to it. You're good to go. Okay, so now I think I'm done. This is a long video. i got to cut parts of this. Anyway, so that's my story. Hopefully you liked it. Hopefully you learned something. Give it a try. Take your own measurements. See what happens. Like I said, this isn't... This isn't, you know, exactly how you have to do it. This is the way I'm doing it. It seems to work really well. I like it. Now I've got two of these. I am going to try and winter a nuke next winter. Hopefully it survives. Um, and I've got to finish my screen. I've got to finish putting the rest of these pieces on my other screen bottom boards. Uh, and they'll be ready to go. So like I said, hopefully you'll like it. Give it a try. Give me a thumbs up if you like it. If you don't like it, give me a thumbs down. I'm good. I can take it. Any questions, comments, please leave them. If you if you like the if you like what you see, you like the videos, consider subscribing, supporting the channel. There's a little bell next to subscribe. To, uh, one more time. There's a little bell next to the subscribe button. Click on that bell. You will get notified every time I make a video. So I think that's it, YouTube. I think I've gone on long enough here. Give it a try, like I said. So until next time, I will talk to you guys later. Bye.